So just want to say again, just welcome everyone to our leadership development program uh, webinar for WeBreathe. Um, we can go ahead and st get started and just want to say thank you again for making time to um, to uh, learn more about this funding opportunity. So before we get started, I did just want to do a couple community agreements. Um, as always, we just want to make sure we're being respectful to all presenters and attendees. Uh, we're looking to create a safe and welcoming environment um, in this Zoom meeting. Uh, we also do come with different lived experiences and expertise. Uh, take care of yourself in this space. So, you know, if you haven't had a chance to get a snack or drink some water today, definitely encourage you to do that. Make sure you're taking care of yourself. Um, as mentioned, this uh, presentation is being recorded. So do, you know, uh, we just want to make sure you feel comfortable. So if you don't want to have your, uh, if you don't want to be recorded or anything, um, uh, if you don't want to have your, um, if you want to keep your screen off, uh, that's perfectly fine. Uh, there may be hiccups during this live event. So as always, your patience is really appreciated. So just want to do uh, make some time just for a land acknowledgement. Um, you know, I do just want to make sure that uh, the network and We Breathe is paying respect to both past, present, and future generations of Native peoples. Um, and we thank them for their hospitality. Uh, I would, I would like to begin just by acknowledging that the land on which uh, we gather is the occupied territory of the Tongva people. So I live in uh, Los Angeles County, which is occupied territory of the Tongva people, um, as well as where all presenters and attendees occupy. Um, and I just want to firmly say that, you know, the United States is on stolen land. And again, I just think it's just really important for us to acknowledge as we... Um, do you continue to do work in our local communities throughout uh, the state of California? So for today's agenda, um, I'll be just going over what it is exactly that We Breathe does and who we are. Uh, I'll be touching on a little bit just on Tobacco 101, just in case uh, people need a little bit of extra information about what exactly the topic that we're covering. Um, then I'll be spending majority of the meeting doing an overview of the leadership development program. Um, and then I'll be doing a close uh, to make time for any questions that anyone might have. So what we do and who we are. So um, as mentioned, I'm staff for the LGBT for the California LGBTQ plus HHS network, um, which is the parent organization of the We Breathe program. Um, here are just some of my colleagues, including Danny, who is our director, Aston, who does a lot of our, um, who's currently actually going to be working on the uh, lesbian, bisexual, uh, transgender and queer um, program that we're going to be launched, that is, has already begun to be launched. Uh, Isaias, I believe, is here. I don't know if Isaias, you want to introduce yourself <laughs> real fast. Hey, my name is Isaias. Um, my pronouns are he, him, and his, and I'm the manager of programs at the network. And yeah, I'm happy to be here. Thanks, Isaias. Um, and then we have Ariella, who's our communication specialist, myself, who's the Weebree program coordinator. And then we have Jessica Esquivel, who is from Out Against Big Tobacco Los Angeles. Uh, we do have our intern on um, this call. So Lou, if you just want to introduce yourself as well. Yeah. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Lou. He, they pronouns. I'm the communications intern. Um, and a little bit about myself. I go to UCR. I'm a history major. I'm graduating um, actually in like two weeks. So, yeah. Cool. <laughs> Thanks, Lou. And Lou's been doing just a lot of amazing communications work um, to help support like the Weebree program and also uh, our other programs of the network. So if you do end up getting selected to be part of um, our grant program, uh, there's a huge chance you actually might be working with um, Lou quite a bit. So the, the I just wanted to, I won't read the whole thing, but I do just want to kind of make sure that we're all kind of like, this is, um, I wanted to share this just because this is basically the mission of the uh, We Breathe program which is to, well, I guess I'll just read the whole thing. <laughs> it's to provide a basic foundation on tobacco-related disparities the LGBTQ plus community faces and how the LGBTQ plus coordinating center, which is We Breathe, um, is available to assist in eliminating tobacco usage in California by 2035. 
So a lot of the work that we're trying to do is related to just trying to re re uh, reduce um, tobacco related um, health disparities faced by the LGBTQ plus community. I'll be touching a little bit more on what exactly those those uh, disparities are, but I just want to make sure we are all on the same page about like what we breathe is and what the work we're trying to aim to do. So these are just some of the different uh, areas that We Breathe covers. Uh, some of these include research and data collection, uh, developing educational materials, um, you know, doing advocacy work. Uh, we do technical assistance and trainings. And then we also, as you just met uh, Lou, uh, we do also house an internship program. Um, what we're here to talk about specifically today is the Leadership Development Program Grant. So just touching a little bit on the educational materials, uh, these are just some of the examples of um, flyers that We Breathe has created related to how tobacco impacts things, whether it's trying to get a gender affirming care for trans and non-binary folks, or if it's um, how it relates to HIV treatment. Um, so basically, again, we're just trying to create a lot of materials that are relevant to the LGBTQ plus community as it relates to tobacco uh, tobacco use. And we also do host training. So some of these are some of the previous trainings that We Breathe has held. So includes uh, things ranging from like LGBTQ plus identity training, because uh, a lot of the partners who we work with are definitely wanting to try engaging the community, even if they're not necessarily specifically LGBTQ plus focused. Um, and we also do other trainings such as like how to include uh, LGBTQ plus voices in the work that we're doing. So a lot of these trainings, again, are aimed at trying to help to um, improve other organizations or other programs uh, outreach to our community. Um, and then we also do things such as research. So we might be occasionally doing like public intercept surveys, uh, key informant interviews, gallery walks. Uh, next year, we're planning to actually do a needs assessment survey just to see what statewide providers for tobacco prevention work. Um, need in order to help support their work more. So again, a lot of the work that we're doing, again, is aimed at um, improving um, and helping other organizations uh, do outreach to our community. Uh, last, and then I just want to touch a little bit too on our policy work. So we do have a policy platform, uh, which just basically lays out a lot of the priorities for um, us when it comes to trying to do equitable tobacco prevention work. So um, one of the key sort of uh, action items that we have on here is to ensure that law enforcement and police are not involved in tobacco prevention work. Uh, we believe firmly that um, a lot of communities, specifically people of color and LGBTQ plus folks, unfortunately have a lot of uh, trauma, have experienced a lot of trauma and criminalization at the hands of law enforcement. And because of that, um, that's why we did in, end up including um, making sure that uh, tobacco prevention policies are being enforced more from like a civil standpoint. So whether it be code enforcement or something else uh, and not having it be law enforcement, uh, we also don't want like police to be involved in like classrooms, et cetera. So just wanted to kind of highlight that specific piece of what our policy platform covers. So, and just to touch a little bit more on the internship program, uh, Lou is currently uh, fit, is currently doing a year long internship um, for uh, the Webre program. Uh, right now we're having them focus on communications. So graphic design, uh, being a spokesperson. Uh, this is actually Lou right here holding the trans flag <laughs> um, in this picture alongside myself and some of our partners um, after we did a panel at our community forum of, of a couple months ago. So again, that was an example of Lou um, being a spokesperson for the program. So now just to touch a little bit on Tobacco 101. Um, so part of the reason that we're doing this work is because tobacco, the tobacco industry has definitely spent a lot of money and has spent a lot of time trying to target our community. Um, this includes using drag queens in their advertisements or uh, making uh, calls to be, pro uh, you know, trying to be like, oh, like if you use this product, like you're showing your pride, like during pride month, uh, releasing pride themed uh, tweets or like um, other social media posts. So um, this has been happening for decades and um, the results of that have been 
that our community is way more likely to use tobacco products um, in comparison to our cisgender and straight peers. Um, and again, uh, just some of the research that's kind of been done on looking at LGBTQ plus tobacco use. Um, so this particular statistic just shows that three in 10 lesbian, gay, and bisexual youth currently use, uh, you know, vape products, which is 25% higher than heterosexual youth. Um, I did just want to emphasize again that uh, part of the work that we're trying to, and advocacy that we're, that we're trying to do is increase uh, trans and non-binary representation in a lot of the data that might be getting collected. So you might notice the specific statistic shows that uh, lesbian, gay, and bisexual youth, uh, but not necessarily looking at trans youth. Unfortunately, a lot of researchers have often left out the trans community when they're doing a lot of their research, and we're trying to change that. Uh, but for the data that we do have, uh, we do know for sure, we do know from research that uh, transgender youth of color do use tobacco products at higher rates than their cisgender and white counterparts. So I did just want to emphasize again that like we're always trying to advocate for more data, but even with the limited data that we do have, um, it is just more reason for us to want to um, increase trans and non-binary visibility in our work. Um, with that in mind, and the fact that like, uh, um, you know, lesbian, gay, bisexual and trans folks are more likely to use tobacco products. Uh, these are just some of the uh, health issues that might arise from tobacco usage. Some of these include uh, tooth loss, rectal cancer, um, blood clots, um, heart disease, erectile dysfunction. So they're just a lot of reproductive harm. There's just a lot of different um, health issues that might arise from using tobacco products. Uh, which mean, and because uh, our community is more likely to use these products, it does mean that we might be at higher risk for a lot of these issues as they're related to tobacco. So now we'll be jumping into why we're here, which is the Leadership Development Program Grant. So goals of the program, um, and as mentioned in a lot of the advertised materials you might have seen, um, this is a $6,000 grant for the year, um, which will be running from July uh, 2024 to June 2025. So the goals of the program are to help grow LGBTQ plus public health advocates um, and also gain a help help um, people who are awarded the grant to gain a deeper understanding of why tobacco is an LGBTQ plus rights issue. Um, the program is really uh, centered around helping to gain uh, for participants to learn new skills. Uh, some of the trainings that we held were on LGBTQ plus data collection. Uh, we also held training around social media. Um, we also held a training on trans specific impacts of tobacco. So these are just some of these examples along with the ones listed here. Uh, for some of the training um, that we've been able to offer our participants to learn new skills or gain new knowledge. Um, and we're also just trying to look to gain more, uh, foster more collaboration uh, between our program and all programs uh, participants. So just as much as um, the um, grantees might be uh, supporting our work, we also want to make sure that we're being there to support other folks' work as well. Uh, by just continuing to foster that partnership. So um, in case y'all haven't seen it, this is the flyer leading to the um, application. So if you all uh, do want, if you have your phone or anything, uh, this QR code will lead you to the application. Um, the RFP application, uh, which would, um, RFP, I'll be using that for kind of like uh, um, interchangeably with grant application or any other word you might be associating with um, this funding this funding opportunity. Um, but uh, this RFP, our RFP application is now open. Um, and again, this, this QR code here will lead you up to it. Um, the program um, does include, again, leadership development training um, that will provide, you know, that will provide a direct professional development for grantees. So just as much as this program is about doing a lot of deliverables, it's also about investing in a lot of your um, professional leadership or um, or work that you might be doing um, within public health and specifically tobacco prevention. And again, this grant is for $6,000 for up to five awardees. And organizations and individuals are welcome to apply as long as you reside in the state of California. 
So getting more specifically into who can apply, uh, you again, you must live, you must reside in California and you must perform your work in California. Uh, we Breed is a California specific program. So we just wanna make sure we are keeping it um, here. Um, you are welcome to apply if you're an LGBTQ plus um, and BIPOC ally. Uh, so you do not necessarily need to identify as LGBTQ plus to be able to apply to this grant funding opportunity. And you don't necessarily need to be an LGBTQ plus, like specifically serving organization, as long as you are willing to engage in the work that we're doing around um, LGBTQ plus tobacco prevention. Um, and again, you know, individuals and organizations dedicated to LGBTQ plus health. Uh, we do. We are looking for folks who are either experienced in event planning um, or graphic design for this grant. Um, if you are new to tobacco prevention, so let's just say you've never done this type of work before, that's totally okay. Uh, we're you know we're taking people at any level of understanding about this work. Um, and then if you do happen to be a sub grantee of an other CTPP funded project, uh, you are also welcome to apply. So let's just say you're funded by like. Uh, another LGBT like tobacco prevention uh, organization, let's just say in the Central Valley, um, you're also able to apply um, as a if if you're as long as you're a sub grantee of um, com coming in as a sub grantee of them. Uh, who does not qualify for this funding opportunity? So you know, obviously, you know, obviously, anyone who lives and works outside of California, um, homophobes and transphobes. So we do not want any, um, people who are homophobic or transphobic applying. Obviously, I don't expect to have that here, obviously, but, um, just wanted to make that clear that, uh, people who are not supportive of our community are obviously not welcome. Um, individuals and organizations that accept money from the tobacco industry. So it is part of our grant just to say that you can't accept money from the tobacco industry. Um, Projects directly funded by CTPP. So if anyone here happens to be like an LLA or a regional project or any other sort of directly funded by CTPP, unfortunately, this funding opportunity um, is not open um, to your organization. Uh, we are trying to keep this only open to sub grantee to others to sub grantees or to folks who are maybe uh, not into who don't necessarily have um, um, funding from tobacco or from um, the cat from the state. Um, I did see a question just saying that some of our programs are funded directly by CTPP, but some of our programs are not. Are we eligible to apply as long as they don't overlap with the funding programs? Um, Isais, do you happen to have any thoughts on that question? Yeah, can you repeat the question? So they're basically saying that their organization, um, that they do have a program that CTPP funded but the staff who might be applying would not be in that program. So it'd be the same organization, but not the same staff. Yeah. Uh, if it still counts as being funded, uh, your organization being funded by CTVP, um, even if the staff themselves are not funded. Um, so, which is not necessarily a problem unless uh, you're working in the same jurisdiction that, that we are, which I would highly doubt. Um, so I would I would recommend still applying to make sure that um, uh, you are we we will check if there's any like conflicts of interest, but um, I think it should be fine. Yeah, thanks, Isis, for um, your guidance on that. So basically, um, you're still welcome to apply, and we, we could do some of the legwork for you in terms of seeing, ensuring that um, um, that you, that there is the qualification for that. Uh, hopefully, that's helpful. Um, I also want to mention too. Um, I I know that this has been kind of stated previously, um, but just in case that we're all on the same page. Um, Unfortunately, sub grantees from the from this pre from this current cohort. So we do this is actually our second cohort that we're going to be launching. Um, do not qualify for this specific funding opportunity. But as always, you know we want to be maintaining our partnership uh, with anyone who's currently funded. So I do just want to say that um, if we do come across any additional funding opportunities that are similar to this one, uh, we'll definitely let you know if you do happen to be a current sub grantee. 
Uh, for uh, I do see the question about what is CTPP. Um, basically, CTPP is the state uh, program for which we are funded. Um, so that's the California Tobacco Prevention Program. Um, so yeah, so basically just as long as you're not funded by the uh, state to kind of do the work that we are doing already, um, you know, um, you're good to qualify. So I just wanted to make sure we're on the same page on that. Hopefully that's helpful as to what that is. Um, I would probably say that most uh, folks who are kind of entering this work probably might have not heard of that, but I think for most Pro, uh, programs that might already be falling into these categories listed here, which are LLAs or regional projects, uh, are most likely more familiar with what CTPP is. So um, I think the likely, you know, so again, I just wanted to say that, like, if most likely if you're coming in, if you're kind of newer to tobacco prevention work, um, you do not most likely fall into this category. So getting into the specific details of the program. So I just wanted to go over some of the responsibilities of what is going to be required for anyone who's awarded this grant. So um, for those who are selected for this grant program, you are required to participate in the We Breed Leadership Development Program. That does include attending our meetings that you might be holding. So as mentioned before, we did hold several trainings through this program. Uh, you are required to attend these meetings. Um, just to ensure that you are actually receiving the um, development that we're aiming to um, to provide. So that includes trainings around, um, for instance, again, like transgender impacts of tobacco use. So how exactly trans people are specifically impacted um, by tobacco or uh, how to do SOGI data collection. So if you're interested in learning a little bit more about research, that could also be an option for training. So I just wanted to say that um, we want to be intentional about um, making sure that everyone is actually able to benefit from the curriculum that we're offering. Um, it's not a huge ask. Again, these are being held every couple months. So it's not like we're doing like this, like it's not like a class. I, I use the word curriculum, but I kind of mean that more in the sense that like you're, you're, you're being taught new skills, basically. Um, not so much like a class. <laughs> um, another thing too, you have to be participating as an active member of um, the network. So um, by attending at least three network calls, we hold one every month. So basically throughout the year, you just have to be able to um, attend at least three times. Um, and we also do want you to be able to, to provide two to three updates to be shared through our listserv. Um, they do not need to be tobacco related. Um, so we, just, but you know, such so as say you, you or your organization's working like um, an LGBT event somewhere, like that would totally apply even if it's not related to tobacco. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and again, we're just wanting to help y'all engage our network, our own uh, listserv and our own partners as well, just to help build your um, help build your network. So this this part is just um, wanting just to get more specific into what it is exactly um, some of the deliverables outside of just kind of what's already like the baseline ones I just laid out. So when you're applying for this application, you will be given the option to either choose um, either supporting us with two community forums or helping with uh, developing five tobacco related LGBTQ plus education materials. So these would be considered your capstone projects for the grant. Um, I will be getting a little bit more into what each of these will look like, but just want to say that uh, specifically for the um, option two, which is developing educational materials, if you are selecting this option, um, you know, either experience in writing communication materials, so whether it be op-ed, social media posts, et cetera, so it's very broad, um, or doing digital art design is required for that option. So just want to make sure that everyone's kind of clear that if you do end up applying for option two, that you are coming into this with that type of experience. Uh, for the community forums, um, these events are uh, basically help, uh, meant to help educate, um, whether it be our partners who do tobacco prevention work or community members. Uh, we're trying to educate them on how, why exactly tobacco is an LGBTQ plus issue. Um, Attendance at these community forums is required. So um, just want to make sure we're clear about that. Um, 
most likely what's going to be ending up happening and we're going to be if you do end up choosing this option you will be part of the community forum work group which will help to plan out this event um most likely the first one in the fall is going to be virtual and the most likely the second one in the spring will be uh, in person i can't provide any more details just because we haven't formed this upcoming uh community forum work group so it'll ultimately be up to the work group to help determine like where we might want the location to be next year um, and when um, the, the virtual one might fit into everyone's schedules. But just wanted to make sure we're laying this out. If there are any questions, just feel free to type it in the chat about this, but I'll be getting more specific into these deliverables in just a second. So just about the quarterly meetings, uh, we're most likely gonna be holding uh, three to five. Uh, it might depend on just what types of trainings people want who are, end up getting awarded the program because we did do a survey at the beginning of the um, this this current cohort, um, just asking what types of trainings they wanted. We ended up doing, um, I believe, three or four trainings uh, for the program. So again, it's just aiming to help increase, um, to help uh, provide curriculum around, whether it be data collection, community organizing, policy, and uh, much more. Um, and again, we're going to be asking folks uh, who do get accepted to the program, what types of professional leadership development they might be wanting. Um, and then this is another piece that's required of, of all awardees, uh, so again, just to attend the network calls. So we do hold our once a month network calls. Some of you actually might already be attending them anyway. So um, basically the network call is just where all of, um, the network and our partners end up meeting and sharing a lot of updates. Uh, we want this opportunity to just be a chance for you to be able to showcase your progress and work to um, our partners. Uh, you never know. I mean, you might find a contact who might have a future funding opportunity, or you might find a partner who you can collaborate with at one of these calls. So again, we're just trying to be really intentional about what, what, can, what might end up benefiting you by giving you a chance to attend these meetings and maybe even give an update about how your work is going. So going more specifically into option one out of the two for our capstone project, which the first one is community forums. Uh, again, we're going to be holding two community forums uh, within the next calendar year. So that have to be or uh, within the next 12 months. So that have to be one virtual, one in person. Um, this previous our two, we've had we've held two in person community forums. The first was in Sacramento. The second was in um, Los Angeles. So um, a lot of this programming, again, it's just it's basically just like a live event that's happening either in person or virtual including things such as like uh, panel discussions or trainings or activities. So um, just wanted to kind of give an, an idea of what you might be getting yourself into with this option. Uh, the goal of the community forums is to engage or is to um, engage community members and community partners um, to talk about the links about like tobacco prevention and how it impacts our health. So just a bit more information about what this um what this item might end up looking like. So some of the responsibilities have to be including like helping to identify like ASL translators for the in-person forum. You might be assisting with logistics such as like helping us with food orders or venue selection. Uh, you might be doing outreach on social media and through email to help get uh, more participants attending the forums. Uh, you might be presenting um, or facilitating activities during the two community forums. So you might be asked to either be a panelist or lead some sort of activity you might be holding. Um, and then you'll also be helping to create the program for the community forums. So uh, helping to create the agenda or helping to you know brainstorm some different activities that we might be doing. So moving on to option two, which ought to be educational materials. Um, the intended audience for educational materials uh, is broad. So, you know, ultimately, uh, if there is something you're specifically wanting to do, our communication specialist, uh, Ariella, uh, would be working with you to help develop it. Um, so some of the targeted audiences for our education materials include uh, LGBT plus young people and adults, uh, BIPOC communities, students, policymakers, and more. Um, there's no limit to what an educational material can look like. So that include flyers, infographics, videos, TikTok clips, et cetera, as long as it is covering LGBTQ plus tobacco impacts. 
So um, before I move on to just setting up for success, I just want to reiterate for um, the community forum deliverable. Again, your attendance would be required at both of those. Um, and then for educational materials, um, you do have to ha come in with experience um, or at least some experience with um, a, a graphic design or uh, writing for a, a broad audience. So setting you up for success. Um, so we are going to be holding an orientation in the month of August um, where all the subgrantees will be uh, invited to attend just to ensure that we all have this necessary materials and information to succeed in this program. Uh, we also do want to provide updates. Uh, we're, we're aiming to help um, you build your network by, again, giving you the opportunity to provide updates during our network calls or our LGBTQ plus advocates and allies meetings. Uh, I won't get into too much about what that uh, what the advocates and allies meeting is in this space, but it basically is just um, a meeting that we that I hold uh, once a month to give our tobacco prevention partners a chance to kind of talk more specifically about LGBTQ plus issues. Um, Subgrantees are more than welcome to attend that. Um, and then we're going to be doing check-ins most likely on a quarterly basis to um, ensure that you have the tools for success. Uh, that can be including just sending an email just to make sure they're doing okay or um, again just um, holding our work groups etc so just wanting to do make sure that we are doing constant check-ins just to make sure you're feeling supported so some information about how to apply um, i did share the flyer um in the ch in the thing in the uh, a second ago i'll be sharing it again momentarily um, but we do just want to make sure you there is going to be there is a funding opportunity alert uh, document which lays out a lot of the uh, requirements and other information. So just make sure you do read that carefully um, for the Qualtrics application. Um, just make sure you do complete and answer all questions. Um, I would probably have to say that the more information you provide um, in a reasonable amount, um, the better. So, you know, if you're kind of just responding to most of the questions with like one word, it might not be providing or with one sentence, it might not be providing us the most, uh, it might not be providing the review panel the most information to base your application. So I'd probably just say just be as thorough um, and concise as possible with your, with your uh, responses. That's that way uh, our review, our selection panel does have um, enough information to judge your application. Um, your application uh, packet, which um, which will be submitted in the Qualtrics survey. So basically that survey that you might end up opening is just kind of a one-stop shop. Uh, it must include your completed application. And if you are applying as an organization, you will get asked to submit a 501c3 letter from the IRS. Um, and then if you're an individual, I think you'll be, uh, after if you do get accepted, you'll be asked to provide a W-9. But that would be after the application submitted and after you've been notified of your acceptance. Um, applications must be received by 1159 on June 21st, 2024. Unfortunately, because of our competitive bid process, if you do submit it late, we will not be able to accept or review your application. So just make sure that you do meet this deadline if you do plan to apply for the $6,000 funding opportunity. So um, I think I ended up being very efficient <laughs> right now because I'm way ahead of schedule. Um, I did just want to open up this for any verbal questions. Um, I believe most of you, let's see. Um, I guess I can go ahead and stop sharing my screen. But um, I do believe that most of you might have the ability to already unmute yourself, hopefully. So if you... Do you want to ask yourself any, um, I guess I'll allow just everyone to talk. Um, if you do have any verbal questions that you'd like to ask, uh, definitely feel free to let us know. Uh, I'm definitely here to provide any information. Um, I also will be handing off to Jessica, to Jess in a second to talk about their funding opportunity, but I did just want to open up for questions about the We Breed specific program right now. So everyone should be have the ability to unmute yourself if you do have any questions. So... Uh, feel free to let me know if you have any questions right now. Ryan, I, you addressed about the information we should provide. Is there a word limit? Or is there a word limit you suggest? 
So there's no word limit in the grant in the application. I will just say, um, just from our last time, like I think some people were providing like, like gigantic like, uh, worded uh, per you know, set um answers. I don't know if that's necessary. I don't want you to feel stressed out about this application. Um, that's why I'm kind of emphasizing that there, while there is no word limit, um, I think being thorough and concise is always appreciated. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Uh, Patrick, your hand is raised. Yeah, thank you. I'm I'm the idiot that asked about CTPP, and it's it's not because my organizations know that this work. It's it's that I've only been here for three months. Um, and can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I'm listening. I'm, I'm told that we've had funding from CTPP in the past, but not currently. Is it so? May we apply then? Yeah, if you don't, if you not currently, um, I just want to reiterate the difference real fast before I answer your question specifically. Thank you. If you let's just say because we do have some partners such as Out Against a Big Tobacco LA or Out Against Big Tobacco Central Valley, if you receive a mini grant in the same way that we're offering mini grants right now, you are eligible to apply. But if you're literally contracted by CTPP and you're like a regional project or an LLA. Um, you unfortunately are not able to apply. I hope that the difference is kind of, I hope that everyone kind of understands the difference of what I'm kind of talking about. Um, but if you're a sub grantee of another organization, you're able to apply. Um, and if, if, if you've received CTPP funding in the past, but you're not currently funded in the way I just described, uh, you're eligible to apply. I hope that that answers your question. It could be a little like sometimes this language can be a little bit jargony, so hopefully, um, hopefully it makes sense. And I'm learning. Thank you. Yeah, of course. And I appreciate uh, the question. Does anybody else have any questions about this application and what um, anything else that might be helpful to you as you consider applying? I just want to say I did not really emphasize this in my presentation, but if you do get accepted, be working very closely with myself. So I'd also like to think of that as a benefit. <laughs> so I will, um, if there are um, no more, uh, Patrick, I see your hand still up. I hope, uh, did you have any more questions or anything? Um, just want to make sure that um, I, I didn't, and I didn't intend for my hand to still be up. Oh, I see. Lower hand. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah. So um, think, if you all do have any more questions, um, I'll drop my email in as soon as I, um, it, I'll drop my email. All right, Lou, would you be able to drop my email in the chat real fast for people if they do have any questions? Yeah, no problem. Um, I did just want to be uh, transparent, of course, that because we are doing a competitive bid process, um, I can't provide feedback on how your specific scope of work might apply or not apply in the application. Uh, so we just want to make sure no one's getting like extra help from our staff. Um, and we are going to be having an independent review panel <clears throat> who's not a We Breathe or Networks or who's not We Breathe staff um, reviewing this. So just want to be transparent about that as well. So. Um, if we, your application will be reviewed by a lot of our partners who are familiar with the work that we do, but are not, um, again, not, not we breed staff specifically. So once again, here is the application, um, flyer, um, feel free to, um, you know, this QR code also, um, Lou if, if, Lou, if you happen to have the uh, application link, would you be also able to drop that in the chat? Yes, I believe I posted it above your current email, but I can post it again. Thank you. Um, so hopefully y'all have the access to the application. Um, and hope we're excited to have some, hopefully, hopefully most of y'all folks uh, be able to apply for this. And again, the deadline will be June 21st at 11.59 p.m. And I'll go ahead, I believe Jess is on uh, this call. So I'll go ahead and pass it off to Jess to talk a little bit about another funding opportunity we currently have at the network. 
Yeah, I'm here. I don't know if folks can see me, but I'm here. <laughs> my name is Jess. My pronouns are she, her. Um, I'm a program coordinator at the network. Um, my program is specifically for Out Against Big Tobacco, Los Angeles. So right now we have a similar program going on. Ours is a community engagement program. So we've worked closely with our subcontractors to engage the community and, you know, ultimately just build up um, the foundation for folks who are trying to kind of like, you know, build a more, I would say like, maybe not stable is the right word, but kind of a more of a presence in this in this kind of work and tobacco control um, advocacy work. So just kind of want to talk a little bit about the eligibility requirements as they do differ a little bit from We Breathes. Um, so individuals and organizations are both welcome to apply. Um, community members and allies who are committed to serving the LGBTQ plus community. And again, if you're new to this work, kind of just another way to kind of learn more, um, be exposed to more networks, um, all that kind of good stuff. You may already be currently funded, uh, CTPP funded, and that's kind of one big distinction. I know, Ryan, there was a kind of a, you know, long explanation as to what that might mean. Um, so just knowing that you may already be currently funded um, or CTPP funded, that's still okay that you're still eligible. However, you must be based in Los Angeles County. So another kind of big distinction would be that Ryan's is statewide, mine is specific to the Los Angeles County area. Um, so if you find yourself, um, you know, kind of being in Los Angeles and also um, eligible, to, eligible to, to, to apply to both, um, I think that's more than okay, right? Unless you're already currently CTPP funded. But if you're not, I think it's more than okay to apply to both. Um, and then if selected, individuals are required to submit a W-9 form. So just kind of keeping that in mind, but it's not required as a part of your application. Um, and if you are an organization that wants to apply, you do need to, even within the application process, upload a 501c3 letter and tax ID. So kind of like, the nuanced information, uh, but I just want to make sure that I'm getting as much as I can out to folks and knowing that this is also um, just under a year long program. So you'll see in this flyer, uh, July 15th, 2024, that's when we begin uh, really getting into like everything, I guess, in August and then um, ending in June at the end of June of next year. And our specific amount is for two thousand five hundred dollars. Um, and again, just kind of the purpose of all this is highlighting tobacco control work within the LA County and building capacity among um, LGBTQI folks and communities. So we have that um, that QR code there for folks as well. I also, oh, sorry. Um, sorry, I also want to interject sure, and clarify a little bit about the CTPP eligibility. Um, if the 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 intent for both programs for we breathe and out against big tobacco is to engage community organizations and allies and individuals so so that's where that idea comes from is if if you work with community you 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 may or may not have experience in tobacco control um you you're more you're you're encouraged to apply and if you are currently funded by tobacco control it it is okay if you're a subcontractor of a current pro uh uh of a current project that is funded by by tobacco control, uh so it's okay if you're if you are currently funded as a subcontractor if you're directly funded by TTP that might may uh make you dis disqualified um if you still want to apply uh, uh I would still encourage you just to the we'll we'll check if 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 that would be an issue or not. But um, the intent of the program is to bring in community members and allies and organizations who may not be um, experienced in this space or who are have a little bit of experience but are not directly funded by TTP uh, through a direct contract from them. Uh, so that's why when we say you may be eligible is uh if you are getting uh, uh if you have a subcontract with an agency um that is fine uh if you're contracted to so, by someone else who is funded that's fine right but um if you're directly funded by cdp that that might pose an issue i hope that i hope that helps a little bit more as to like what qualifies and not qualifies yeah, thanks, Isis. I wish that there was an easier way to explain all this. Um, <laughs> I was like, I wonder if there's a way I could simplify this. But I'm honestly, this is like the way Isis described it really is the way to understand it, unfortunately. So 
like not to say Isai's gave a bad answer, but this, you know, again, the the nuances can be a little bit hard to explain. Um, yeah, but I think again, like the way we just think of it, if you're if you're directly funded by the state uh, to do this work, uh, you can't you don't qualify. You mo you know, most likely don't qualify. But if you're granted by like a, a by an organization that's not the state, um, like through sub grant, um, similar to this one, uh, you do qualify to apply for either. As long as you're meeting all the other requirements, I just want to emphasize too that, um, as just said, a we breathe is open to 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 folks across California. So you could literally be like right at the border, of California and like Nevada. As long as you're on the California side, you qualify. <laughs> um, you know. So, um, but uh, unlike that, though, with Jess's program, um, you do have to reside and work in LA County. I wanted to, um, I'm sorry, really quickly, I put in my contact information on the chat, but I can't see anyone else's messages if there's anything in the chat. Like, I didn't even see your um, email, Ryan, and I don't know if that's just me, but hopefully y'all can see my contact information. Oh, um, I hope it should be, uh, Lou, you might just, I I, oh, sorry. Yeah, I'll go ahead and send it. I think I'm realizing it, I had put it as host and panelist, but I'm not seeing, there's another option for just everyone, so. I'll reset oh, yeah. it. Uh, yeah, just make sure you do that. I appreciate that, uh, Lou. Um, and then I see a question. Is it possible to apply as an individual if you work for a nonprofit or would that be conflicting? Uh, I can't. I don't think we can speak on behalf of your organization's HR. Uh, and, this, you know, we won't be able to speak on behalf of that. I would say that um, if your work is feeling is flexible about your time and you're applying as an individual, um, and you're able to do work as long as your organization is willing to give you the flexibility to attend the meetings that we're holding and attend the events that we're holding. Um, you know, I don't see that being an issue, but a lot of the work will be happening during normal business hours. Um, and unfortunately, we aren't able to accommodate people who, like let's just say with the community forums being held at like 10 a.m. And you can only do work at like 6 p.m. after work hours. Unfortunately, we won't be able to accommodate that type of schedule. Um, so I would just consider asking your organization, but if you do apply as an individual, you'd be considered at least on our end, an independent contractor. Um, so I, I would probably be looking in it that sort of way. Um, so it just really depends on how your organization is willing to accommodate uh, you participating in this program outside of your normal work. I hope that answer is helpful. Uh, with that, um, are there any more remaining questions before we close out this uh, meeting time? And here is my email. Alou did drop it into the chat. So um, please reach out if you have any questions. Um, let's just say you run into issues with the application specifically. Uh, feel free to reach out. Um, I might not be necessarily able to answer specific questions about how, you relate, how your work relates to the program, but... Um, I could definitely try my best when it comes to troubleshooting any issues you might be coming across or anything else. Well, seeing no more questions, uh, just wanted, I'll go ahead and stop recording. Um, I really did just